why I'm at Essence Festival, it's a dream come true. Because as a hip hop artist, you have to be upper echelon in terms of your spirit and your vibe. So to be included in that, it means a lot to me, definitely. I'ma kill it, I'ma kill it, I'ma kill it, I'ma kill it, I'ma kill it. My name is D1, and this is my New Orleans. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we're here is because this is my old high school. This is Ben Franklin in the heart of New Orleans, Louisiana. This school, it really shaped who I am as a person. Before D1 even existed, it was just David Augustine Jr. Back then, I hadn't found my identity as an artist yet, so I was rapping about a bunch of stuff that I wasn't relating to. Like, I probably just left biology class, but I was talking about killing and my big gun that I'm carrying, and all of my friends were like, yeah, yeah, that's what's up. So the reason why D1 is in the game now is because I want that high schooler who was writing his first rhyme to say, dang, I can just rap about my reality and I don't have to glorify a bunch of negativity. I wouldn't be true to my roots if I rapped about a bunch of foolishness. And I see that my music has really impacted this culture in a positive way. How you doing? What's up, dog? Good? Good to see you. Oh, honey, be very proud of it. Always have been, from the day he was born. It's always just been the bond that I have with my grandparents. It's just been the love that I feel that has really shaped me into who I am. The normal thing I do when I come in is I give my grandma a kiss, I give my grandpa a hug, and I come right over to this refrigerator. I was on tour a couple years ago with, with Macklemore, so so me and Macklemore did like a 50 city tour together. And when we did our show in New Orleans, I told him, I was like, well, I'll give y'all a real New Orleans experience. And then we ended up here at my grandparents' house. And I think my grandma cooked like what, like eight gallons of gumbo or yeah. something? Yeah, mm -hmm. barbecue ribs, and they enjoyed that. That was my first album I put out. And I actually had my grandma and my grandpa on one of the songs. I had like voicemails that they left because they called a lot. I'm gonna call you all day, all night. <laughs> I heard one time you said you picked up when your grandmother called and you were on stage. Right. I put the phone to the microphone and the whole crowd heard her talk and it was funny. But look, this is, this is it. Yeah, this is my mom. Just wanna find out how you show up last night. You can call me when you're available. Bye. Just checking on me, see how my show went the night before. She just, she know my whole schedule, <laughs> where I'm going, <laughs> everything, so. So it's been 10 years since Hurricane Katrina hit, and I'm reminded of that every time I pass by my old hood, because it, it, it still feels fresh on our minds, but it's been a decade. So the fact that my high school reopened January 17, 2006, it was the first public school in the city to reopen after the hurricane, that's beautiful, you know? So this courtyard, everything here was mm -hmm. underwater. So it took us about seven years to get a new courtyard. The gym, we got a grant to redo. The gym, so yeah, so this is where, you know, this is where I spent a lot of my, um, a lot of my time. Everything in here is brand new because after everything. Katrina, it literally looked like a giant accordion. My friends and I, we would go right out there on the basketball court. We'd get in as many games as we could before homeroom. Lunchtime, after school, before ba real basketball practice, we'd be right back out there. Those are some of the finest memories I have to this day. These walls saw me continue to persevere and be determined, because I got cut from the team. And me getting cut really fueled my fire to want to work harder. And sophomore year, when I did make the team, I made varsity, I became a starter, and it just taught me never to give up, honestly. All right, Essence, now we're at the Dragon's Den. Something very special happened here. I'm in college at the time. My man, True Universal, he asked me to come and open for him 
and everybody came to see me performing here. They like, dang, David is a rapper now? He rapping? And unexpectedly, I had no idea. My best friend in the whole world, my man named Carl LeBlanc, and he showed up at my show that night. I pulled him up on stage, and he's sitting there looking at me with a big smile on his face, because I'm talking about when we was youngsters coming up. I'm talking about, you know, the path that our lives had taken and how I wanted it to come back to how it used to be. Man, I had, I had a gun you know, held to my temple in an attempted robbery. And I pretty much thought I was about to get killed on the spot, you know, and my whole life flashed before my eyes and it really clicked to me that I could be gone any day. You know, I had to be bold about whatever it was I stood for. So when I saw my man Carl over here, I saw it as an opportunity for me to invigorate like this bold change in his life. I said three months after I did this show, um, Carl got murdered, you know what I mean? He got murdered down here, right around where I grew up at. So me doing this show, Dragons Den, I just always think about like, man, it's the last time I saw my boy, you know what I mean? And got to perform for him, got to really let him know how much he meant to me, how much I really loved him, you know what I mean? So Dragons Den is a crucial spot in my, uh, in my development. So this is where I grew up at. We on Dwyer Road right now, you know what I mean? That yellow house, that's my crib. The house right next door to it, that just show you a little bit of how Katrina really devastated stuff. The relationship Essence Fest has with New Orleans is special because after Katrina, Essence left for one year because we had no infrastructure back in New Orleans. But right after that, Essence Fest was back in New Orleans, and Essence has been loyal to our city. You know, I'm, I'm good friends with Mayor Landrew and with his whole staff. There's definitely a community building component to Essence. We need that type of stuff down here. This city is more than just murder and Mardi Gras, you know? So what can you expect if you buy your tickets to come and partake in the Essence Festival? Well, you will have a wide array of artists who are giving it their all because this performance, it is like symbolic of something much larger and much greater. There's not many concerts where you walk out feeling better in your spirit, you know what I mean? And Essence Fest is all good vibes. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, make sure you buy your Essence Fest 2015 tickets. It's going down. And we signing off in five, four, three, two, and I'm D1. Peace.